Welcome to Genesis Volatility's educational series. Today we'll be exploring the FTX move contracts and discussing some key option pricing insights. There are currently three types of move contracts, daily, weekly, and quarterly. Let's look at the weekly move contract as an example. When there's exactly one week left until expiration, the first hour of spot prices will be time weighted in order to determine the strike price. At the end of the week, the last hour going into expiration will also have a time weighted average price to determine the final settlement value. The weekly move contract will pay the difference between the strike price and the final settlement value. And that's what you're hoping to capture. You're hoping to capture large moves in the underlying that will pay out at the end. A quick final thought, because the weekly move contract will pay out in up markets as well as down markets, and the size of the payout will be proportional to the magnitude difference between the settlement value and the initial strike price, we can essentially say that these are volatility positions. But that's not quite right, and so we need to explore some of the characteristics that are embedded in the move contract that extend beyond pure volatility trading. Let's explore those now. One of the important insights to keep in mind when you're trading unhedged move contracts, and the keyword here is unhedged, is that you're not only making a bet on volatility, but you're also making a bet on trending versus mean reverting markets. So you could actually be wrong about the realized volatility assumption, but be right on the trending assumption and still make money in the move contract. Or you could be right about the volatility or the realized volatility of the underlying and be wrong about the mean reversion versus trending aspect and actually lose money on the move contract. Take this as an example. Let's say you buy a move contract today on Bitcoin and the strike price is struck at $25,000 and Bitcoin today is at $25,000. Well, using an unhedged move contract that you hold until the end of the week, if the price of Bitcoin went from $25,000 today to zero tomorrow, to $500,000 on Wednesday, back to zero on Thursday, back to a million dollars, back to zero, and then settled finally at 25,000, you would have mean reverted perfectly from the start to the beginning. You would have seen extreme volatility that's essentially unheard of and actually lost money on your move contract because you were wrong about the trending versus mean reverting assumption. So how can we deal with this? Let's explore Delta hedging. In order to isolate the volatility component of a move contract or any option position for that matter, you'll have to engage in something called Delta hedging. Delta hedging is basically rebalancing your Delta exposure as the underlying volatility position changes. So when you first put on this move contract at the money or when the strike is first struck, the delta exposure is gonna be near zero. As the underlying rallies will pick up deltas along the way. And in order to flatten those out, you need to sell the underlying as the rally, as the spot price rallies. As the spot price then goes back down, you'll need to buy back those shorts that you just sold in order to rebalance your deltas again. This is known as gamma scalping. And essentially being long gamma allows you to sell high and buy low or buy low and sell high. And that's the beauty of being long the FTX move contract. If you expect volatility to happen, just like we explored in our previous example, and the underlying goes crazy, well now you can gamma scalp very profitably because the, move, the underlying prices move enough for you to create um, income from rebalancing your deltas. Now, we've explored delta rebalancing and gamma scalping, but this isn't quite the end of the story yet. Gamma isn't constant all the way through. Gamma changes on how in the money or out of the money or at the money the underlying option position is or the FTX move contract is versus how much time is there left until expiration. Let's think through a couple examples. Gamma is essentially highest at the money near expiration. So we come across this concept known as path dependency. Path dependency essentially says 
The amount of gamma scalping rebalancing income that will generate depends on the path of the underlying. So let's say in this first example, the underlying moves 5% around your at the money strike constantly. Well, that is gonna generate more income than if the underlying first rallies 30%, now your FTX contract is very in the money, and then it scalps back and forth by 5%. The first scenario makes more money because at the money options or at the money FTX move contracts have bigger gamma rebalancing conditions than the FTX move contract that's 30% in the money. And so that is known as path dependency. Let's explore another example. Let's continue a little bit on this concept of path dependency, but instead of talking it with respect to spot price, let's talk about it with respect of time until expiration. So let's say you have an FTX move contract and this weekly move contract on the very first day, gamma scalps by 10% at the money and then day six through seven does nothing. And let's look at another scenario where your weekly move contract day zero through six does nothing. And in the last day, it scalps 10% around the at the money strike. So both of these contracts had the same scalping time by the same scalping magnitude at the same strike price spot price relationship, but the payouts are gonna be a lot different. And the reason why that is, is because as time goes by, your gamma profile around at the money becomes bigger. And so if there's less time until expiration and you're scalping around at the money, that's gonna be a higher payout than the same type of price action when there's more time until expiration. So those are two key concepts of path dependency. And when you're trading FTX move contracts, you need to continue to think about these processes. Let's explore some other components. Another interesting component of the FTX move contract is the process of creating the strike price, as well as the process of creating the final terminal settlement value. So both of these prices are determined by a one hour window time weighted average price. Now in a quarterly contract, two hours out of a quarter is not that big, but on a daily move contract, two hours out of 24 hours is 1 12th the amount of variance. So your first hour and your last hour, because you're using a time weighted average price instead of the strike price at the very first second of creation and the settlement value at the very last second until expiration, you're gonna have these tampered down beginning and, and ending settlement values. So you can't compare the FTX move contract on a daily basis directly to the Daribit Bitcoin straddle. They're gonna be quite different because there's gonna be a difference in final settlement volatility. So those are some concepts to also keep in mind as you're trading these contracts. And now, last final point, Greeks. So something you might notice is that if you're looking at the GVOL dashboard, you might notice that we calculate Greeks for FTX move contracts that actually don't have strike prices yet. So some of the basic assumptions that we assume is that we're calculating Greeks as if the strike price was spot price as of right now. So the quarterly contract, what is the Greek profile if we struck the spot price as the strike price today and assumed 90 days until expiration? Well, something you might notice is that the Greeks will tend to be long delta, even when no strike price has been struck or the assumption of at the money strike. So why is, this, why is there a positive bias to my FTX move contract? So one way to conceptualize this is you're essentially picking up volatility if spot prices move. Now, what I mean by that is, would you rather be long a straddle on a $10 asset or a straddle on a $100,000 asset? You know, what would be worth more? What has more optionality in dollar terms? Well, essentially a straddle on a $100,000 asset basically is like, a, it's like 10,000 straddles on a $10 asset. And so you actually have this positive bias for spot prices to continue to rally despite having a position that theoretically should only pay out on volatility. And that's because as the prices rally, 
you're actually gaining volatility exposure because your underlying asset will have a higher, higher price and a higher value. And when the strike is struck, you'll have a strike price on a more expensive asset. And so your straddle will be worth more. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. And remember, find edge, capture alpha, and slang size.